There still should be quite a bit of excess on here. I'm going to cut these ears down to make it uh, a little easier to turn on the lathe. That way I can uh, get them rounded off. Uh, you know, I, I could have cut them originally, uh, you know. I could have done the whole thing on the manual lathe and then just put it in the mill for the last stop, but... Uh, and considering how much it cost me in broken end mills, I probably should have. Oh, that plastic. God, this stuff's a nightmare. Not sure how much more I'm going to cut on here. Shit back at you if you wouldn't believe. actually spins pretty dang true. It's a 13 inch swing, so that's not an issue. This is the issue. Okay. Um, so to, to fix that and to be able to reach around the backside, basically I need to loosen this up and have it come at a different angle. You know, probably 180 degrees from here. Um, or maybe not because I'm not going to want to come out at a 45 to be able to get on the backside for the next cut. I don't have to go on the backside for this cut. Um, oh yeah, so actually oh yeah, that gets me out there. And I don't want to cut this until the next pass anyway, but so I've got plenty of room to get all the way through that. So nice. Ooh. <laughs> Just barely gets it. All right. Not high. 300 RPMs. I should figure that out. But. Uh, 
I let it run on there a little bit so we can uh, see how uh, close it is. That's pretty dang close. It's within a couple of thou, concentric wise. Okay, now I gotta cut the uh, face off this far enough down to meet that hole. Then I'll trim up that hole. Then basically what I'm going to do is I'll have a flat spot here with a hole that is concentric to that. Close. It's a three jaw. Um, then when I flip it around, okay, I should be able to do the face, the final bore on that hole, the, outs, the OD, the taper, and reach around the backside and get the flange and the dia and the lip for the rotor. And then everything, if it's all cut at one time like that, it will all be perfectly concentric. Um, and I left roughly 50 thou everywhere to take off on the lathe because I wasn't quite sure just how close the mill would get it. So, I think we're going to step up our uh, uh, feed speed though for uh, going across the face there. tip either. Hmm. Guess that's not the uh, smoothest cut there. I'm gonna cut a truer, cut a hole in the backside here, okay? Now understand that this thing is still over an inch thick. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna flip it over and grab it. Um, and the jaws only reach maybe a half inch. And the flange that I need on the front is only about a half inch. Uh, so there's some no man's land in the middle there. Uh, so I'll be able to cut the perfect hole on the backside, and then in another op, I will come back and address this backside and take the meat out of the backside. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that on the mill or the lathe. Uh, but in order to get this backside true, I need to uh, do the front side. <laughs> Pulled the cross side out a little bit and put a chamfer there just to make sure I had a perfect, nice. A lot of this is talking out loud to myself so I can figure it out since I've never done it before. Um, I'm going to reach around the back side and do the two surfaces I need. Everything past that doesn't have to be perfectly true so I can turn it over and cut it close. Uh, but if it doesn't line up perfectly, it doesn't really matter. But this should be this should be accurate enough. All right. So from this point, I can it's it's a three jaw chuck, which isn't perfectly true. I should use a four jaw if I wanted to set it perfect. But here's the thing: if I cut my inner bore, I can cut my face because I've got excess left on everything. I can cut my OD, I can reach around the back and cut the two surfaces for the rotor mount and everything will be perfectly concentric. Right on the money. 3.307. Alright, that one's done.
Okay, that should be pretty damn close. Doing about a 30 foul depth of cut, and it's uh, running uh, two and a half foul per uh, in. That should be the final thickness of the adapter. Uh, now I gotta cut the step in for the uh, rotor to sit in. And so that will have to be accurate both in the Z and in the X. Now you probably can't see it very well. I intentionally went with a 322, that might even be a 323. Uh, anyway, what it did was it gives me a bit more of a radius down at the bottom which I double checked on the rotor and uh, it's got a chamfer there so no problem. So this should be accurate thickness and diameter. Uh, now basically I just have to uh, set up and cut the uh, angle there. Critical parts are done provided I got that right. The mill should be able to handle putting the holes in no problem. Should easily go over more than far enough. to run that back and forth manually you know if I had left all of that on there that was why I uh, wanted the mill to take off most of that because I just have to sit there and watch the mill do it I don't have to sit there and turn the cranks the whole time man okay I'm tickled pink with that <sighs> almost afraid to take it out all right, moment of truth. So I went ahead and wire wheeled off most of this, and I just realized that that uh, fillet down here, I'm going to have to create a, a chamfer here. So when I put it in the mill, I may do it there. I may put it back in the lathe. Uh, I may just put it back in the lathe. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's see. All the way up to the fillet. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go cut a chamfer. All right, I put a 60 degree chamfer in there to get out on this shelf without coming too far up here that hurt my registration. Oh, that's better. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. Oh. Mmm. Please, 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 please. Ah. A little more, yeah, definitely more uh, play than I want. 